Hey everybody, it's Keegan here. I'm back with another video for you guys. And today's video, I'm bringing you guys and bring you guys another edition of Keegan's movie reviews. And today we're going to be talking about three films this time around. And all three of these films I'm going to be talking about today are films that I watched theatrically as of recently. One of them I saw in theaters on Sunday of last weekend, which was Father's Day. The second film I watched I saw in theaters on Wednesday and the third film I actually saw in theaters earlier this afternoon and I actually just got home from seeing it about an hour ago as I'm recording this video. Now normally when I review movies that I've seen theatrically like more than one I do them I usually do them in order of which one I saw first. However this time we're going to do something a little different this time we're going to be going in a different order of of the films that I saw in theaters as of recently. Well, you'll see what I mean in just a second. So, uh, yeah, let's not waste any more time and uh, let's talk about today's films, shall we? So, we're going to start today off with the film that I saw in theaters earlier this afternoon. And that is the new Wes Anderson film, Asteroid City, which this film actually just came out yesterday. And like I said before, this is the newest film from Wes Anderson. Now, Wes Anderson is one of my favorite directors. He is a great director. I like his style, the, the style of his films. This is the same director of films such as The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, The Royal Tenenbaums, Rushmore, The French Dispatch, which was his previous film and one that I reviewed back in season three when I saw the film in theaters back in 2021, and I really enjoyed that one. I actually revisited The French Dispatch two days ago before I went to go see this film in theaters. And um, yeah, now he's coming out with his new film, Asteroid City. Which, like I said before, I saw the film earlier this afternoon, and uh, we'll get to my thoughts on that in a bit. And right now, we'll just get into the story of the film, and then we'll get my thoughts into it. So let's take a dive into Asteroid City. So Asteroid City is actually a film that's about a play within a film that centers around a group of people in the middle of a desert in a place called Asteroid City sometime in the mid-1950s, and it follows a these group of people spending their time some of them are stranded on asteroid city while people who live in asteroid city and it's like a little place where there's like an asteroid that landed where there's a big crater on the ground which is what the place is known for which is why it's called asteroid city and then later on there's an alien that appears around halfway through the film and uh, throughout the film, it cuts through each act of like which scenes, because this film is basically a play within a movie, which I thought was pretty unique. And it cuts to like the narrator or whatever, who is played by Brian Cranston. And it cuts from the play within the play and stuff. Uh, without giving away too much, that's basically the storyline of the film in a nutshell. So Asteroid City, I uh, really enjoyed this film. I thought it was a pretty great film from uh, Wes Anderson. Although I'm not sure if I liked it as much as uh, The French Dispatch. Although that film was a completely different film compared to this one. But I still uh, really enjoyed Asteroid City for what it is. Even though this movie's been out for a day... Online, I'm seeing a lot of uh, different, a lot of mixed reactions to the film. Some people are liking it and some people aren't liking it. Well, even though this movie's only been out for a day, as of this video, I'm seeing a lot of uh, mixed reactions for the film. But I personally have really enjoyed the film. But I'll definitely say that this film is not for everybody. You're either going to like it or you're either not going to like it. But I really, really enjoyed it. I like the idea that the whole movie was a play within a play within a movie, which I thought was pretty cool. All the performances are really well done, and like every other Wes Anderson film, it's got a pretty big cast. Some of the big names play minor roles, like small roles, and others play the lead characters that appear a lot in the film. And um, believe it or not, I didn't know this at the end, but the alien was actually played by Jeff Goldblum. I'm like, holy shit, he plays the alien. But yeah, you got, a big, you got a pretty big cast in this one. And believe it or not, this is the first uh, Wes Anderson movie since I think it was Bottle Rocket or something. I actually haven't seen that one yet. That this is uh, the first Wes Anderson movie that doesn't have uh, Bill Murray in it, who's in almost every uh, Wes Anderson film except for Bottle Rocket. I think he was in the Darjeeling Limited. I don't know. I haven't seen the Darjeeling Limited. 
Um, I haven't seen Bottle Rocket or The Darjeeling Limited, but those two are films I plan to cross on my watch list uh, this year. I know that's a bit off topic, but I wanted to point that out, but I got to get back to, to the film here. But uh, I really enjoyed this one. I like the style. It's kind of your traditional uh, Wes Anderson style. It's got the same old style, but in a different film. While I don't think this movie was, I don't know if I liked the movie as much as I enjoyed uh, The French Dispatch, even though the, the, this and The French Dispatch are two different films. But I still really enjoyed Asteroid City for what it was. I'll def I definitely see myself watching it again. And I will definitely get it when it comes out on Blu-ray sometime this year. Maybe in September or something, I'm not sure. Or October. But if you like Wes Anderson's other films, you're probably going to love this one. But if you're um, wanting to check out a Wes Anderson film for the first time, I suggest you could check it out. But I would definitely check out his other films after you watch this one. But you're either going to like this movie, you might not. But I uh, really, really enjoyed it for what it was. But anyways, I don't have anything else to add. So I'm going to give Asteroid City an 8.4 out of 10. The next film I'm going to be talking about in this video is the one I saw in theaters on Sunday uh, on Sunday of last weekend, which was Father's Day, of course. And that is the 1974 John Cassavetes film, A Woman Under the Influence, which was written and directed by John Cassavetes and was originally released on November 18th, 1974. And um, I watched the film for the first time on uh, Sunday of last weekend. Now, I actually, I actually own this film on Blu-ray in the John Cassavetes 5 Film Collection Criterion box set. Even though I already own it, I saw it in theaters because why not? Despite already owning the film on Blu-ray. Uh, this is my third film from this director that I've seen. And the name John Cassavetes sounds familiar because he's actually the co-star of the film Rosemary's Baby, which I actually talked about in my last movie review that I uploaded two weeks ago. Yeah, he uh, directed this movie. So uh, I'm not really going to go into too much into this film other than the story and my thoughts of the film without giving away too much, of course. So uh, let's take a dive into A Woman Under the Influence. Now this film centers around Nick and... And um, Mabel Longetti, played by Peter Falk and Gina Rollins, a couple with uh, three kids. Now, uh, one day, Mabel starts to act starts to act a little strange, like she's not herself, like over the course of a few days. And then Nick, along with uh, along with uh, Mabel's mother, starts to think starts to realize that. Uh, Mabel's having some sort of mental health issues. And then later on in the film, they ship her off to an institution for over the course of six months to see if she'll get better. And then and basically it shows how it affects the family before and after they send her off to the institution and uh, the aftermath of once she gets out of the institution six months later. And, um, without giving away uh, too much, that's basically the story of the film. Now, this is the third film from John Cassavetes that I've seen. And, uh, so far, well, I wouldn't say it's my least favorite. It's, uh, not my favorite that I've seen so far. Although, there is some stuff I enjoy the about the film. It's a well-made, it's a well-shot, and a very well-acted film. And, uh... Especially the performances from the child actors are really well done, too. And uh, John Cassavetes was known for being the godfather of American independent cinema. Not really going to go too much into that in this video, but if you know a little bit about John Cassavetes, then you probably know about that. Anyways, I enjoy the film for what it is, although there are some issues I have with the film. I find the film is a bit too long. It didn't really need to be over two and a half hours long. And some scenes kind of dragged on for a bit longer than they needed to be. But those are just some minor issues with the film. It does have a pretty good storyline of the movie. But I don't know. I just didn't love it as much as I thought I would. But I still enjoyed the film for what it is. But it's definitely not my favorite film from John Cassavetes that I've seen so far. Um, but 
I don't really have a whole lot to say about the film. Like I said before, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this movie. So we can just move on to the next film pretty quickly. But if you enjoyed some of the other films that John Cassavetes has directed, then um, I guess it's pretty good. I'll probably talk about his other films uh, someday on the channel. But I don't really have a whole lot to say. So I'm just going to give A Woman Under the Influence a 7.5 out of 10. And finally, the third and final film I'm going to be talking about in this video is the film that I saw in theaters on Wednesday. And that is the 2022 Switzerland film Mad Heidi. Which, uh, this film is actually a crowdfunded film, interestingly enough. And this film was originally released on November 24th, 2022. However, it got re-released and was released in Canada, well, in the theater that I went to see it at least for one night on June 21st of 2023, which was on Wednesday. And I saw this film in theaters with my brother and his girlfriend. And this was actually a one-night event screening of the film. I think it's like one of those Fathom events, I believe is what it's called. I'm not really sure. But I went to this movie pretty blind, pretty blinded as possible. Although I know that the that the film was actually a, the whole film was a crowdfunded film. Like the budget from this movie, like for this movie came from crowdfunding, which is actually pretty interesting. So the film is fairly low budget. There's a lot of green screen effects in the film. But uh, this is a exploitation B movie is or what I'm going to call it is what this film is. So uh, we're going to talk about the storyline of the film and then we'll get my thoughts on it. So let's take a dive into Mad Heidi. So the story of the film, it takes place in a dystopian Switzerland where Switzerland is under siege by a, a tyrant, a cheese tyrant. And basically all the people who are lactose intolerant are bad and are uh, basically there's like a genocide for them and they're just being captured or something stuff like that and their cheese is basically the only cheese that could be sold around the country and every other every other cheese is considered contraband and it follows a woman named Heidi who uh, seeks out revenge against the government after her boyfriend was murdered for selling uh, contraband cheese to the country and um, she escapes from the prison she was held in and then she, she becomes a warrior and then from there she starts killing all the bad guys and starts to lead a rebellion. Well, the storyline is pretty straightforward so you can basically get the idea of where the storyline was going. So uh, yeah, without giving away too much, that's the story of the film in a nutshell. Now, like I said earlier, the film is a crowdfunded film so this is a fairly small budget film but it's done it's really well made for a uh, fair for a crowdfunded film while some of this uh, there is a lot of green screen there are some pretty good practical effects in the film the blood special effects are a mix between cgi and fake blood as far as i could tell from when i saw the film in the theaters same thing with the gore it's a mix between practical effects and cgi i noticed from when i saw the film well, this is not really a film for everybody, but if you watch the film with your brain off, it's really entertaining. And um, I had a fun time seeing this film in theaters. I uh, I really, really enjoyed it. If you like these kind of movies where they're just exploitation movies and they're just B movies that are just cheesy and they're just really entertaining to watch, this is one I would recommend. It's pretty cheesy, but it's fun. I had fun seeing it. I would pr definitely see it again. I believe there is physical media releases of this film already. I'm not sure. I think there is, actually. But if you like these kind of movies with uh, cheesy acting and cheesy everything, and movies that are just uh, more fun to watch with your brain off, then I would recommend it. But I don't really have a whole lot to say about Mad Heidi other than I had fun seeing it in the theaters and I would definitely see it again. So I'm giving Mad Heidi a 7.9 out of 10. So there you go. That's going to be it for today's video, you guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, as always, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, share the video with your friends, family, or whoever. 
Follow me on my other social medias. Links are in the description down below. And if you've seen one or all three of these films, let me know what you guys think of these films in the comments below. Uh, more videos will be coming out soon, so stay tuned for more. But anyways, that's all i got to say. So thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.